Hello, everybody, and welcome to a virtual tour of the College of Ag campus at Purdue University. We are so glad that you're joining us today, and we look forward to showing you just a little bit of our home away from home. Uh, we're going to start by introducing ourselves. My name is Courtney Kelly, and I am a senior studying agriculture education. Um, I have enjoyed my time at Purdue more than I can put into words, and I have been fortunate enough to have many internships, experiences working on campus, as well as studying abroad all over the world. Um, I also so changed my major at Purdue um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go along. I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Sohini introduce herself and then Nelson will introduce himself. Hi everyone, my name is Sohini Barra and I am a junior majoring in agricultural communications with minors in studio art and design and international studies. Um, so far my time at Purdue has been very, very busy. Um, I've also been a part of numerous internships and study abroad programs, um, as well as working on campus and being involved in outreach. And next I'll let Nelson introduce himself. Well, hello everyone, I'm Nelson Knobloch. I'm a senior in agribusiness management um, out of Wolken, Indiana. So uh, a senior, so have definitely um, look back in the last four years and have been a, an, an absolute pleasure to be here on campus. It's a fantastic place. I guess some of the things that kind of highlight my career are some different leader development opportunities as well as um, some internships with across the country and um, just an overall place to, to make some really great connections and uh, that I'll definitely take with me. So we all three serve as part of the Ag Ambassador team for the College of Agriculture. So that we serve as the student recruiters for the college. Uh, we are going to be pulling up an image of our team. Uh, there are about 30 of us and we work uh, throughout the year to give tours of our campus as well as to work at different recruitment events across the country um, and here on campus as well. Um, so this is us. The next thing that we are going to do, uh, I just want to kind of orient you to the area. So um, Purdue is located about an hour north of Indianapolis and about two hours south of Chicago. Um, we are nestled here. We are actually located in West Lafayette, Indiana. Um, our sister city, Lafayette, as you can see right there, is across the river. So West Lafayette, where Purdue University is located, is predominantly a college town. Um, most of the campus is made up, uh, or most of the town is made up of Purdue University's campus, and about 80% of all people that live in West Lafayette are in some way, shape, or form affiliated with Purdue University. So today our tour is going to focus on the agriculture campus, but what you're looking at right now is an entire map of our campus. So um, in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see the quadrant of campus where most of our residential life is, um, where all of our residential halls as well as some of our Greek life are housed. Um, if you have ever been to our campus for an admissions tour, you likely saw the main campus, um, which is in the upper right hand corner of your screen right now. Um, you got to see some of the engineering campus, for example, our main campus, Memorial Mall, all of those things. But today we are going to be focusing south of State Street. So State Street is the only street that divides our campus and we are nestled right here on the south side of State Street. So we, as you can see, are using Google Maps and so if you miss something, you want to see something a little bit better, you can at any time go and visit any of these sites or images that we have posted for you. So you can see that little yellow guy in the bottom right hand corner. He is going to allow you to see a bunch of different images and you'll see these blue dots pop up of campus. So we're going to go ahead and click on a few of those. There are more than just those for the College of Ag campus. There are tons of them located all across Purdue University's campus, but we're going to focus on those in the College of Agriculture today. So we're going to go ahead and start here outside of our Ag Administration building. I'm going to turn it over to somebody else to talk right now and I'll pop back in here in just a minute. I'm happy to take over. So right now we are looking at one of the best views in my unbiased opinion of Purdue campus. We are on the lawn of our agriculture administration building looking um, towards State Street, the bell tower right there in the background and Memorial Mall in front of us. This lawn area is kind of a really special place in our college bag. We have a lot of our, um, we host some gatherings in this area such as a midnight pancake dinner as well as our ice cream social at the beginning of the fall semester. 
Um, so during our fall semester, we have all of the clubs from the College of Ag come set up booths right here, and each different um, club sets up different ice cream flavors, so you get to travel to each one of them, learn a little bit about what they do, as well as get some free ice cream. So it's just a nice little meeting ground for us in the College of Ag. And then if we turn around, we'll um, face the Ag Administration Building. So kind of just by the name, this is where all the administrative stuff happens. We have our offices of our dean and a couple of other important rooms that we're gonna head inside and check out. Yep. So right now we are in the Ag Administration Building, um, looking up the stairs that we just came up from. Um, right behind us is our office of our dean and our current dean is Dean Karen Plout. Um, she is such a very cool and incredible woman. Um, her background is in animal sciences and one really cool thing about her is that um, early on in her career she actually worked with NASA in studying lactation in mammals and so I think that just really demonstrates how broad the field of agriculture is, is that you can major in animal sciences but end up working for NASA. Um, so you know your options are limitless. Um, and then to the right of us we have a couple of, of our um, banners highlighting some of our special programs. So one of those is our Office of Multicultural Programs. Um, that is run by Dr. Morris and Myron McClure of the College of Ag. And the Office of Multicultural Programs is there to kind of just be a resource for students. I mean, you don't have to be a minority student or not an underrepresented student. It's kind of for everyone in the college to um, get some more uh, like diversity in your college experiences and get to see some more faces. And then the uh, banner behind it is for our study abroad programs. So the College of Agriculture is really unique in that we have our very own study abroad office. The university as a whole has a study abroad office, but so do we, which means that we have special programs in agriculture for ag students and ag study abroad scholarships. I know for myself, I was very lucky in that I got to study abroad to New Zealand last semester. Um, so I was there for five months, um, enrolled as a full-time student studying at the University of Canterbury. Um, I got to take some really incredible classes and learn things that I would have never gotten to learn if I had spent that semester at Purdue. Um, I got to learn about the indigenous people of New Zealand, um, some of the native ecosystem and biodiversity of the island. And at the end of my study abroad experience, I also got to participate in an internship doing some communication work. So that was really awesome and kind of one of the biggest highlights I've had at Purdue so far. Um, so I know Courtney has also studied abroad as well, and she's done um, some of her shorter term pro programs. I don't know if you want to talk about those as well. Yeah, so as Sahini mentioned, we do go to a lot of different places. We travel to over 60 countries every year and have a wide range of trips. As you can see, uh, we do offer shorter trips that are not a full semester if you can't fit that into your schedule. That was the case for me, so I elected to do two um, may semester or short-term summer programs. So those are three to four weeks at the end of finals in May, and I chose to do those. One of those was specific to my major of agriculture agriculture education um, and I went to Jamaica for that trip and then I also uh, was fortunate enough to get to go to New Zealand on a short-term study abroad um, the following summer. I've also been on two that were shorter term in terms of a week or less. So I've been on a spring break trip as well as a winter break trip. Um, both of those are about nine days in length um, and they are really fast but really um, impactful. And I think that the great thing about the College of Ag Study Abroad programs is they're all ran by faculty and staff within the College of Agriculture for the most part. So you're working with your peers either in your major or in your college um, and you're also working with faculty and staff very very closely in those situations. So that's one of my favorite parts about studying abroad. And next we're going to head into our student commons area. Uh, Nelson, do you want to take over and talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so this is kind of, uh, to be totally honest with you, kind of my home away from home uh, when it comes to campus. Um, so this is the Student uh, Success Center here in the Office of Academic Programs. So you'll see within here there's a lot of different resources. There's uh, lab computers as well as some printing that links to uh, your, I think it's your, your boiler link account and so all that printing money is hooked up. It's about $20 per semester at the rate of four cents a sheet. Um, never really been an issue for me as a student as far as having enough of those funds but 
that's all connected and tied into the to the overall system. Um, so this is a really great place to study or if you have group meetings there are some conference calls back around uh, to the right behind that wall there. Um, and so there's lots of different um, space if that's what you need. I think a couple of really cool things within here, there's the scholarship board right there um, on the, what would that be on the, on the north wall. Um, and so there's always different scholarships posted there. Um, and one that I really wanna highlight is the College of Agriculture uh, Supplemental Scholarship um, application. And so that is um, for both current and um, admitted students who will be joining us uh, the following academic year. And uh, every, I believe last year we gave out over $2.5 million of, um, of scholarships to our students, which is pretty awesome, especially for a college of our size of about 2,800 undergrads. So there's definitely a lot of funds available there I and mean, would definitely encourage any and every student uh, to apply for those funds. There's also some resources around career services, uh, potential internship opportunities, um, and things of that nature. Um, it's also other a great place to get snacks during finals week. That is correct. We love the snacks. All right, so I think we're going to hop outside and we are going to be uh, positioned on the Ag Mall. So this is kind of the central location of their College of Ag campus. So uh, we're going to kind of spin around and you'll get to see uh, several of the different buildings that make up our campus, including the Forestry Building, uh, Whistler Hall, which is part of the Biochemistry Department. Um, you can see far in the distance, the Agricultural and Biological Engineering Building, as well as Philip e. Nelson Hall of Food Science and the Horticulture Building. Um, this is another one of those areas, as Sohini mentioned about the Ag Lawn, uh, that we have events. So we often host an event out here called um, the Ag College of Ag Hog Roast. Um, it often happens here for a college that's made up of less than 30% of students who actually came from a farming background. We do have one evening a year where we spend a lot of time acting like farmers. Uh, we, we chuck hay bales, we catapult shovels, we haul grease pumpkins, you name, we shut corn, can't forget that one. Uh, you name it, we probably do it here at this event, but another one of those events that helps make the College of Ag feel like home and feel like a family. So uh, as Nelson mentioned, we are a college of about, tw about 2,800 students, um, which in terms of a university of about 40,000 students is not that many. Um, so it's really, it's really nice to be part of a smaller community. Um, Purdue, whenever I came, felt ginormous. We'll go into a lecture hall later where my entire high school and most of the eighth grade class would fit in. Uh, so coming to Purdue was a little bit intimidating because of the size, um, but events like this helped to make the College of Ag a lot smaller. Um, kind of going ahead with some of those events that we host, as Sohini mentioned, a lot of our clubs come to those events. And in the College of Ag, we have about 70 clubs specifically tied to our college. However, university-wide, there are well over a thousand different student organizations that you can be a part of. Anything from the Quidditch Club, Disney Movie Watching Club, Collegiate Farm Bureau, you name it. You can probably do it uh, here in our college. So. Um, there are tons of opportunities for you to get involved um, with a lot of organizations on campus. Um, part of being in those organizations, we encourage our students to take part in what we consider College of Ag Transformational Experiences, or better known as Kate. Um, and so being a part of student organizations is one of the ways that you can do that. So Heaney and I mentioned studying abroad as part of our Kate experiences. Um, I'm going to let Nelson talk just a little bit more about some of his uh, Kate experiences, and then we'll move on to our next section. Awesome. Yeah, so a couple of those, um, like um, like Courtney mentioned, things like um, undergraduate research, leadership opportunities within those club involvements, um, internship and um, professional development opportunities. So I guess a couple that come to my mind is uh, getting the chance to be a part of the College of Ag Student Council, known as Ag Council for the college. So some of those events we've mentioned, like Ice Cream Social and uh, the Moonlight Pancake Breakfast and Hog Roast. Um, so the, the student council really focuses on um, hosting and then executing those events and facilitating what goes on during those. So had the chance to 
facilitate that and help really promote current engagement for our students that are on campus, as well as um, facilitate some of the logistics and, and planning behind that with a team of about 20 different students, and then had the chance to lead them one year as well as president. Um, so just some really cool, I think, opportunities you learn as far as how to work with people and how to manage them and how to plan big events and things that are definitely going to impact you as you move into your career. Um, another thing I want to talk a little bit about that I found really um, transformational would, would be the, the career opportunities within the College of Ag. Um, so the, the college provides a lot of resources and opportunities um, of that through things like um, through our College of Ag Career Fair. And so uh, in the fall in October, we have over 155 companies here on campus, everything from nonprofits to startups to Fortune 100 companies to government organizations, anyone and everyone. We fill two massive sized gyms up at the uh, Francie Cordova Recreational Center. It is massive and it is awesome. Um, absolutely love going to the career fair, but I guess some of those opportunities as I look back, um, those have been the opportunities that have really helped to, to shape and grow me as a, as a person, an individual. So I had an internship with a large equipment manufacturer, uh, John Deere, and so got to work with them for two summers and um, moving away from home and, you know, really as far as pushing and understanding what I do and what I don't want in a career um, has been really, really helpful and really helped to transform me as a person uh, throughout my time in college. I think that Sohini has one other transformational experience that I think is valuable for us to talk about. Um, so I'll let her talk about that really quickly and then we'll move forward. Yeah, definitely. So I was um, lucky enough to, got, to get to participate in a year-long program known as Issues 360 that's offered by our College of Agriculture. Um, so basically Issues 360 is a issues engagement initiative it's a year-long program where you're with about 20 to 30 other students who have applied into this program as well as communication experts across the college and basically you learn how to talk and discuss controversial and um, really important topics within the fields of agriculture and science learn how to constructively listen as well as develop um, like logical and sound decision-making skills um, so basically it's like a really great program in increasing your kind of professional as well as personal development to show those future employers that you know how to talk about controversial issues, you know how to listen to people, and you know how to communicate effectively. So it was a really cool program that I got to be a part of. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to hop in to the horticulture area. Um, so we're going to start here in the Jules Janik Horticulture Garden, uh, which was recently uh, redone um, about a year ago at this point. Man, it's hard to believe it's been a whole year. Um, but this is a really um, unique space on campus that I really enjoyed getting to be a part of and getting to work out here. Uh, this specific area of campus is pretty quiet and in the spring and in the fall I love to study out here under the gazebo. Um, but as you can see um, there are lots of different plants here. There are actually over 200 varieties of plants, uh, mostly native to Indiana but some not. Um, but this was redesigned by some by a landscape architecture um, student here um, as well as with contributions from some of our faculty um, but I'll talk a little bit more about landscape architecture here in just a second um, one of the things I think is really awesome about our horticulture program is the amount of hands-on learning that happens um, because of an expansive system of greenhouses that our professors get to work in. So Purdue University is a land-grant university, which means that we um, focus on three main areas, um, teaching, research, and extension. And so all of our professors do all of that, um, which leads me to um, some of my experiences doing a little bit of research so I got to work in one of these greenhouses. There are um, 40 greenhouses in this location um, and several more in another location on campus that we'll visit here in just a few minutes. Um, but as you can see, we're here on the back side of these greenhouses. Um, each one of these greenhouses has a specific purpose and generally a specific research project that's going on. I was fortunate enough to get to work in Dr. Kim's research lab my um, sophomore year. So she does research on aquaponics and aquaculture and I got to feed her tilapia. Um, there she is, 
was there as Dr. Kim. It was a very glamorous job, but um, it was one that I really valued. Dr. Kim is an amazing professor um, and teacher, and so it was really great to get to work with her. Um, one of the other greenhouses that's inside of the horticulture greenhouses is the greenhouse that's tied to the Purdue Student Farm. Um, so one of those student organizations that we're really proud of, um, on our campus that helps to provide food for our dining courts as well as local restaurants. So the student farm has one greenhouse where they have a hydroponic system on campus and they also have about six acres off of campus where they have a couple of high tunnels. That's Dr. Steve um, Hallett and he works with a lot of our students with a student farm um, and they grow year round out there. Um, so it's really cool. Um, they've been able to do a lot of work with Food Finders, which is a food bank system in the Lafayette West Lafayette community and so they get to do a lot of really cool things. Um, so those are some of the cool cool features of our horticulture department. Um, we're going to pop back inside the horticulture building and I'm going to come back to the landscape architecture major. Um, so within the horticulture department there the major landscape architecture is housed and it's actually a five-year program. So our students work on campus for the first three years, their junior year, they're actually given one of these desk spaces to work in and then their fourth year on campus, they actually take a year-long co-op. So a co-op um, is an internship um, equivalent that they take for an entire year. Um, so in a lot of cases they're going to large cities all across the country and working for a year at those uh, at large landscaping firms and then they'll come back for their senior year do uh, several um, senior design projects of different areas on campus and other spaces um, before graduating at the end of their fifth year. Um, but this is one of the unique spaces that our students get to work in. We are now going to be moving into the Philip e. Nelson Hall of Food Science. Um, so food science is a really interesting major. As I mentioned, I changed my major um, when I came to Purdue and I actually started in food science. So had a love for chemistry as well as a love for food. Um, and I still do. Um, I just decided I was too much of a people person to uh, love that more than more than people. But anyways, Dr. Nelson is a really interesting person um, and his research is very, very interesting. Um, and he was actually Purdue's first World Food Prize laureate. Um, I'm going to let somebody else talk just a little bit about the World Food Prize program before we head back to the pilot plant. Yeah, I can take over. So yeah, Phil Nelson here, he is our as Courtney was mentioning, our first World Food Prize laureate. Um, the World Food Prize is basically like the Nobel Prize, but for within the field of agriculture. So it's given to people that have made important research contributions as well as economic, political contributions in this field. So um, Phil Nelson, he was a food scientist and what he developed was a new technology of aseptic packaging, which allowed foods to be transported over longer distances and larger quantities. And basically that technology is um, similar to what a, a Capri Sun package looks like. So we basically did that and took it onto a large scale. And that was a really important contribution. So he won the World Food Prize in 20, 2007. Um, and we're actually really proud to say that we've had two other World Food Prize laureates since then, one in uh, 2009 and one in 2017. So here are our three World Food Prize laureates. That's Phil Nelson on the left. And then I'll jump over to the right. Um, that is our 2009 winner, Dr. Gabisa Ajeta, and he is a Purdue agronomist. And he focused his, re his research on a grain called sorghum, which um, a lot of the people in Sub-Saharan Africa rely on as a kind of like a cereal grain um, for sustenance and stuff. And what he did as an agronomist was develop a pest and drought-free variety of that. And that has helped improve the food security in Sub-Saharan Africa immensely. Um, one thing that's really special about Dr. Ajeta is that he's still a faculty member here at Purdue, so you can take classes from him and get to work with him. He also leads a study abroad program, so I feel like that's really special that you get to work one-on-one -on -one, um, with the World Food Prize winner. And then, then in the middle, we have Dr. Akeen Adesina, and he's our 2017 World Food Prize winner, and he is an ag uh, economist, and his uh, work focused on a e-wallet system um, and also in Africa and it reduced the corruption that was happening between farmers 
and uh, chemical and seed suppliers by reducing that need for a middleman, um, since with the E-Wall system, they could kind of do everything directly. So we're really proud to say that we have three World Food Prize winners, and we're hoping that one of you guys listening will be our next one. I'll give it back to Courtney now. She wants to talk a little bit more about the food science building. Yeah, so um, there are a lot of really cool things in this building. One of those being the pilot lab. I'll also talk just uh, just briefly about some of the other rooms that we are not going to see. Um, in the basement, there is a sensory test kitchen. So a lot of the products that they manufacture in the pilot plant, they are testing uh, in the basement in the sensory lab with students. So you can sign up for their listserv um, and you can be a part of different surveys for either gift cards or other things on campus. Um, so anyways, those are great options to do that. Sometimes it's chocolate cake, sometimes it's cheeseburgers, other times it's, uh, I tested one a couple, couple months ago and it was like mashed potatoes and gravy. You, you can always win, you know? Um, so anyways, so that's one of the rooms that's downstairs. It's really cool. Um, we also house within the food science department, the Indiana wine and grape team. So believe it or not, <laughs> Indiana is actually home to a lot of grapes as well as a lot of other wineries. So about 10 years ago, there were less than 20 wineries in the state of Indiana, and now there are well over 100, um, which is really awesome. Um, but this is a our enology library and is an extensive collection, extension, uh, extensive, that's the word, a uh, collection of wine from across the world. Um, the former a uh, wine appreciation professor uh, who I kid you not, his name was Dr. Vine. This was the only job this man could have. Um, he was a wine taster for an airline and this is his private collection which he donated to the university. So um, very few people get to go in this room. We've been fortunate enough to have a few Ag Ambassador meetings down there as well as I've been in a few meetings down there as well. But anyways, we're gonna hop back to the pilot plant now. Um, so this is a great resource for students to work in. Most food science students start working in this facility their freshman year. So I worked in this facility my first semester, my freshman year. And this is a really cool space for a lot of people to work in. Um, as you can see, there are tons of different types of equipment and all of those garage doors that are along the right side of this plant are all full of other different equipment from everything from pasteurization uh, to packaging, all kinds of things. Um, we can do just about anything any major manufacturing plant can do in this space. And because of that, we actually have a lot of our alumni who send products back to Purdue to be tested um, and then used in that sensory lab, as I mentioned, but also just so they don't have to shut down operations somewhere else. So. Um, Pretty much every major food company in the United States has some variety of a food science, of, of a Purdue food science alum in the building. So anyways, so that's where we are. Um, but one of the cool things that we got to do in the past year um, is create the Boiler Bee Honey, which is a partnership between a whole bunch of departments at the College of Ag. So that's really cool. So our food science students worked with our entomology students to harvest honey for the first time and then worked with AgCom as well as our Ag Econ department to create labels as well as market the product. Um, so the first crop of Boiler Bee Honey came out in February at our College of Ag um, alumni fish fry, which was a great surprise. We love the honey, um, but it's really cool to get to see a lot of our departments work together. Um, this is not something that's unique. This was um, a lot, oftentimes our departments do work together. Um, agricultural and biological engineering students frequently work in this facility as well. We have a food processing minor that you can pick up um, and they do a lot of work in here as well. Um, so we're going to hop over next to uh, Creighton Hall of Animal Sciences. I'm going to let Nelson talk about this, if you wouldn't mind. Um, so go ahead. Awesome. So right now we're standing in the Perina Pavilion part of the new Creighton Hall of Animal Sciences building. So this is one of our newest uh, buildings on the Ag Campus, kind of our shining star and gem right now. Um, so this opened in January of 2018. This was a brand new $70 million uh, construction project with donors from both the state of Indiana as well as large corporate sponsors as well as um, money coming from the state as well. Um, so <clears throat> there's definitely some really strong partnerships with 
uh, different organizations and corporations across the nations that want to give back uh, because they also benefit through hiring our students who go on to create a lot of value for them through their business value chain. So right now we're standing in the Perina Pavilion, like I mentioned. So this is basically one big massive wet lab. Um, so our um, student, um, student farm where most of the animals are housed um, is about 10 to 15 minutes from campus, uh, can make it a little bit challenging. There it is. So that's one of the main ones. So um, I guess, or so within the Animal Sciences Research and Education Center, so there's, we, uh, there's aquaculture, beef, dairy, poultry, uh, sheep, swine, and then there's some, uh, some female and farm operations things as well, but they're all fully functioning um, <clears throat> operations that there's opportunities for student employment and things like that. But um, for instructors who are maybe wanting to do some hands-on teaching with a specific species or something like that, um, taking students out to the farm during a class period can be a little challenging. And so uh, the Perina Pavilion really enables um, for some to kind of in, uh, speed up or make that process more efficient. So the instructor can have the animals here on campus um, for when those students come into class to learn. And so I've been in here, they've had sheep or goats. I've seen sheep intestines on the floor, all sorts of cool things. They do all sorts of really cool stuff in here. And then also there's the entrance to where they take the live animals into the butcher block, which is um, Purdue's meat locker, where students can learn about the meat science and processing side of animals. So those animals are taken in. They all come from the student farm, actually from mostly have been involved in different types of research projects. Uh, maybe they're all experimenting with different types of proteins or different rations of mixtures um, as far as feed diets go and things like that. And then um, they're taken in there and then harvested and processed and then sold through our retail location just um, beyond uh, the pavilion. The Butcher Block is a USDA inspected facility, which is good to know. Um, it is also open to the public. So there is a retail space that anybody can purchase. Um, Purdue associated items in, Boiler Bee Honey is sold there. Um, Ag Alumni Swish Cheese is sold there as well as um, produce specific ice cream flavors brought to you by brought to you in part by Round Barn Creamery. Anyways, as well as lots of specialty meat cuts. I'll let him continue. I just wanted to add that. Oh, you're good. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's so that's pretty awesome. It's very affordable. I mean, very reasonably priced as well. So, um, I've definitely purchased some meat from there during my time here, and it's always excellent quality. Um, so, definitely would recommend. So now we're standing in the main lobby of the of Creighton Hall. So uh, this building is mostly um, faculty space as well as laboratories. There's actually only two classrooms in the entire building. And then there's those main lobby areas as well. So this is one of the classrooms um, that you'll see. So this one's set up a little bit differently than maybe a traditional classroom. This is considered part of the 21st century kind of teaching model um, focused around collaborative learning. And so instead of having traditional rows of, um, of desks, you'll see the tables and chairs set up that allows for more collaborative um, learning so students can work on different um, assignments or things like that together or dis better discuss um, the things that they may, learning, may be learning in class. So both of the classrooms in this building are in that new format, which is pretty awesome. So we're gonna head outside. We'll spin around just a little bit. This is the exterior of uh, Creighton. So when you're driving around campus, this is what you'll be looking for if you're looking for the animal science facilities. Um, but across the lawn from that, are the rest of the greenhouses. As I mentioned when we were at the horticulture greenhouses, uh, there are quite a few on our campus. Um, it's actually one of Purdue's most expensive assets, which I think is really interesting. Um, that and the turf on the football field, you know? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but anyways, um, so we do a lot of really cool things in these greenhouses. As I mentioned, um, Dr. Gabiza Ejeda's research, as uh, Sohini was talking about, um, happened uh, in some part in these greenhouses. Uh, and more so, we, we in Indiana are often pegged as being a corn and soybean state, which we, we are. Um, however, research happens on a lot of different products and crops in these greenhouses. So these greenhouses uh, specifically are related to our uh, agronomy, our botany, plant pathology, plant breeding and genetics. Um, these are their, their, their bases. So um, 
We'll spin around and see a few soybeans. Um, but as I mentioned, we do have a lot of crops that are not uh, those typical Indiana crops. So we have a whole entire greenhouse that's full of succulents uh, and cacti, uh, which is really cool. And one of my favorite spaces that's attached to the greenhouses is our controlled environment phenotyping facility, which is unique to Purdue. So we are the only one in the entire world who has it. Um, I like to think of the phenotyping center as like the really fancy like 360 camera that they have with the Oscars on the runway. Uh, that's how I like to think of the phenotyping center. Um, but basically, we can scan full-size corn plants um, and learn all kinds of genetic information about them. Um, it's really, really cool. Um, but as you can see, we're kind of, they run them through, they take all of these crazy pictures and images, um, and then they come back out and we know all the things about them, which is really cool. Um, but I really like the Controlled Environment Phenotyping Center. Um, off campus, Nelson mentioned our animal science research farms. Um, we also have an agronomy research farm, which is a little over 2,000 acres that students manage. Um, professors are doing research out there on corn, soybeans. Uh, there's some sorghum plant planted out there. I think there's a patch of sunflowers planted out there. Uh, all kinds of different stuff, but a great facility for students to work in. Um, and a lot of the agronomy classes actually go out there and do um, some labs as well. But we have a larger phenotyping center out there um, and lots of fun toys. Um, so yeah. But we're gonna head back inside. Um, we're gonna head into Lily Hall of Life Sciences. So Lily Hall of Life Sciences is kind of the granddaddy of them all. Um, a lot of our departments are currently housed in this facility. Um, my, my department as well, so he needs department, we're in the same department. Uh, we are located upstairs. I guess I'll talk about it just for a second because we don't have any pictures of any of our facilities, but um, because we use a lot of other people's facilities for our education. Um, but our agriculture, uh, science, education, and communications department is up stairs on the third floor in this department. They recently moved into this building as a new permanent home. Um, so our department does um, a lot of unique things. My favorite part about ag education has been the opportunity to take classes in every department in the College of Ag, whether that was just the 100 level class or 100, 200, or even 300 level classes in some of the departments. So that's been my favorite part about ag education um, for me is getting to learn a lot of different things. I like to call myself a Swiss Army knife uh, because I can do a little bit of everything, but I'm not good at any of it. You know, I'm like not an expert in animal science. I'm not an expert in plant science, but like I can, I can tell you a little bit about everything. So um, that's what I like about ag education and ag communications for the, for the same, but we both have professional organizations that you can be a part of, but Hopping back into uh, Lily here, we are going to kind of hop through some of the different departmental uh, areas of this building and then look at some classroom spaces. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to somebody else and let them talk about some of the departmental uh, areas and then we'll hop back into some of the classrooms. I can um, take over. So right now we are kind of in our um, one of our ABE classrooms, that's a temporary classroom that you're viewing here. Um, we're about to get our new building to be finished within, I believe, this next year. Um, so that's going to be pretty exciting to have that uh, attachment. I don't know if you remember earlier when we were kind of looking at that transformation statue, we saw a bit of the old building. So they're building a new addition now. But until that's done, they're housed in the um, Lily. And so right now we are looking at the 3D printing lab, which is pretty cool. So students in the AV department um, will actually uh, get to use this lab to print out anything that they need for homework to create models and such. And then right there in the corner is a combine simulator that has been generously donated by John Deere. So um, John Deere really wanted to make um, learning about agriculture technology more accessible to every student because you know, we in the College of Ag, we recognize that not every student is from a farm background, nor in any ways do you have to be. Um, so with the den generation of John Deere and having that combine simulator, students actually get to learn about how to drive a combine simulator and what technology and parts are used there without actually having to go on. So that's pretty cool. And then we have a couple of our po posters from our Purdue Utility Project, as well as um, some of our other ABE competitions and then a uh, computer lab around here. Cool. 
Right, and now we are in a genetics um, laboratory. So if you're in um, more of our hard science majors, you will probably end up taking a genetics class in here. Um, you kind of have all the basic equipment that you would need to do genetic stuff like a PCR and all that other stuff. I personally have not had any genetics class in here, if anyone else has. I have. Okay. Um, Nelson, have you had one in here as well? I'll let you talk about it if you have. Um, intro to agronomy, um, agronomy 105, we had our laboratory in here as well. Yeah, I would just say that uh, with a lot of the labs at Purdue, um, you get to work with a lot of really cool equipment. Um, and it's, again, a very hands-on approach. I, I think a pretty generalized statement in terms of the College of Ag and Purdue University as a whole. It's a very hands-on approach to learning. So a lot of our science classes have an attached lab for that specific reason. Um, and they are all very, very updated facilities that you're getting to work in. So the general biology and general chemistry labs that across, the, across State Street uh, were recently renovated. So they're all uh, top of the line now, as well as a lot of our other spaces. Again, not only are students using these spaces for research, but so are our faculty. And so there are a lot of really awesome uh, pieces of equipment that you will likely get to use in your career if that's your given area of choice that you are getting to work on um, in your freshman, sophomore years of college, uh, way before you would be ready to take on a full-time job. So now we're going to dive into, this is one of the, uh, the Agronomy Resource Center. So they have a couple of these. I believe this is um, on the third floor, but this one has a bunch of the soil monoliths in this building. So we actually here at Purdue have the, lar or the second largest collection of soil monoliths. I believe there's over 300 um, of these, basically soil cross sections from across the world. Um, and some of these are from as old as the 1970s. Uh, so we've been collecting these for a while and uh, some of them are old as dirt. Um, but so um, they, it's, when I took soil science, otherwise known as Agronomy 255, um, they, we actually used a lot of these for different uh, teaching methods throughout the course. So uh, when we were learning how to identify different parts of soil and why they're different colors and um, things like that, they, they utilize all of these different resources. So it's not just a museum of soils from around the world, but they're but we use them on a regular basis, which is really, really cool. And they're always pulling different ones. Um, so that was really awesome. And um, agronomy is a very hands-on type of how to grow um, plants and crops in a production type setting. And so really focusing on the practical application of that um, transcends into all of their courses and um, kind of kind of speaks as an example for the rest of the college as well. Right, so next, um, we're going to jump into what a larger lecture hall looks like. So right now we are in the third largest lecture hall on campus. This is um, still located in Lily Hall. And this is kind of just an example of what a larger classroom would look like. Um, most of the classes that would take place in this room are more of your general education or core classes as we call them. So that's kind of like your basic English or biology or chemistry class. Um, and those classes are kind of something that's a part of every Purdue student or every university student's experiences being in these large lecture halls. So I know for myself when I was a freshman coming into Chemistry 100 and stepping into a classroom of about a thousand students was pretty overwhelming on that first day. Um, but what's really nice about these classes is the way that they're broken down. So you, you'll usually have a lecture that'll be twice a week held in this large space but then you'll also have a recitation and lab period. And in those recitation and lab periods, you'll be split up with um, about 20 other students from the class and a teaching assistant. And a teaching assistant is either a graduate student of the professor or an undergraduate that's taken the class before and they've gone through all the trainings that they've, need to do, that they've needed to do. And so that teaching assistant will lead discussions during recitation, um, which will meet once a week to go over any information you learned in the lecture that week or any homeworks or questions you may have. And then you'll also um, have a lab that will be taught with that teaching assistant in these in those spaces that we just looked at earlier. So I know that, oh, you want to jump in? I just wanted to add something about recitation. Um, I personally found that really valuable as a person who 
does not like to take tests. I am not wired to take them, not any good at it. Um, and so to be able to use recitation as a time to take uh, quizzes was really, really valuable for me. Um, taking a quiz with 25 of my closest friends was a lot more appealing than taking quizzes with 450 of my closest friends. Um, so that was something that I really enjoyed. As I mentioned earlier, my entire high school and then some fits in this room. Um, so it can be really intimidating. Um, one of the things that I was told before I even got to college was in these large lecture halls that it's really valuable if you sit in the front of the room and for me that was really quite true. Um, as we zoom in a little bit closer to the front, it makes the room feel a lot smaller. Um, if I can only see 50 people, I think only 50 of us are there, even though there are 380 behind us. If I can only see the first 50, then it's a lot closer relationship with the professor. You might feel um, a little more inclined to ask questions, not as nervous about asking those in that setting. Um, the only other thing I would add is um, for a, mo a lot of those large classes, there's also what we call supplemental instruction or SI, which is also led by TAs or other students who have taken the class. Um, and it's an evening, usually time, where you can go, they're usually held in the residence halls, and you can go and get specific help with homework, generally. Um, I met with a TA at, during SI for a advanced chemistry class that I took, and I could not have gotten through the class without that. Um, but supplemental instruction is great. Um, it's a free resource to students. I always tell people interested in coming to Purdue that we have a whole bouquet of resources. You just have to go pick up the flowers to make it um, because they're all over, all over the place. Um, and there are tons of ways to make Purdue what you need it to be for you. However you learn as a person, there are tons of resources for you and supplemental instruction is one of those. Yeah. I think we're going to uh -huh. transition into a different classroom style. Um, so not all of your classes are going to have 500 people in them. Um, we actually have an average class size or professor to student ratio of about 31 students. Um, so as you get farther into a lot of your programs, their classes are going to get way smaller. So um, as a senior completing the program at Purdue, the last two years I haven't had a class that's had more than 29 students in it in the last two years. And that's evident for a lot of different programs but this is a more uh, average size lecture hall seats about 50 um, and there are a lot of classes that happen in spaces that look like this across campus not just in Lilly. So I'm gonna let somebody else talk about this flip classroom just a little bit. Anybody Nelson do you want to talk about that? Sure yeah so the flip classroom I talked a little bit about 21st century learning styles um, when we were in Creighton um, and the flipped classroom is another example of that. So instead of going to class and listening to a lecture and then being having assignments to do outside of class, um, you watch a recorded lecture online or something of that nature before you go to class. And then in class, you spend that time um, doing assignments or worksheets or exercises with the other students. And so it's a little bit more of a hands-on type of learning and so um, allows for more collaboration and hopefully more learning outcomes um, away from that. And when you're, I mean, watching lectures can be sometimes less challenging at home because you may not, um, it's more just taking the material, you can stop and pause and take that material in at your own pace, which is good as well. Um, so I've had, I think I only had one class um, in that format, but I, I enjoyed it. It's a little different, but um, I definitely enjoyed it, and um, hopefully we'll, we may see more classes trending towards that in the future. Great. Um, I'll take over now. So right now we are in Smith Hall, which is home to our Department of Entomology. So much like Courtney, I have also changed my major. So my freshman year, I actually started off in our insect biology program. And I really loved biology and then I found I also missed the people side of things and switched into ag communications. But since then I've still been pretty involved with the entomology department and in helping out with outreach as well as working in one of the labs. Um, so right now you're kind of looking at our one of our examples of outreach. So this is the insect petting zoo bug barn of Smith Hall and so in this room we have a collection of tens of thousands or tens of hundreds of incredible insects um, 
from around the world. So we have things like rose-haired tarantulas to Herculean beetles to African millipedes um, to a bunch of other pretty crazy things. So um, we use all of these insects as resources when we're teaching about the fields of insect biology to just general um, community members, the public, as well as classroom settings. Um, so it kind of fits in really well with uh, our Purdue land grant mission of doing that outreach and actually connecting with the community and making sure people know that, um, you know, what we're doing at Purdue is accessible to everybody. So it's just a really cool um, thing that we get to have. And, you know, even if you're not, um, you know, uh, particularly uh, interested in bugs, they are, I don't know, I think pretty cool. We have um, an annual event called the Bug Bowl or Spring Fest every year that's hosted by the College of Agriculture. And so each one of our departments will set up tents, um, kind of also doing more of that outreach stuff and explaining what they do and engaging with members of the public. And one really special part of that is the Bug Bowl. And so you'll get a chance to spit crickets as well as taste some bugs. So that's a really fun part that um, the Purdue Entomology Department gets to be involved in. I'll mention just to add a little bit to Spring Fest. So Spring Fest is the culmination of a week-long event that the College of Ag puts on known as Ag Week. So with our Ag, Ag alumni office as well as many other companies from across the country who support Purdue University, we throw a week-long event um, where we promote agriculture all across our campus. So whether that's grilled cheeses on Monday for Milk Monday. Uh, we have an event on Tuesday night where we um, pack meals for our local community as well as those globally um, in need of meals. Um, we do, oh goodness, I don't, I can't even remember everything that we do. It's a very, very busy week. Um, there are, uh, which again, it culminates at Spring Fest. So Ag Week is really the student version of that. And then Spring Fest is an opportunity to get to educate our community. Um, so people come from here, there, and everywhere. It's usually conveniently placed with the spring football game uh, at Purdue. So you can go and watch a scrimmage and get your, get your plan on a necklace and uh, whatever else um, you need to get at the uh, Spring Fest event. But there are a lot of opportunities that we um, are a lot of really cool things that we do that week um, those seven days which are a blur uh, usually for students involved with it but looking back um, is one of the best weeks of the year so anyways we are now standing outside of Findler Hall um, which is a beautiful building I just think she's so pretty isn't she um, but anyways Findler is the second oldest building on Purdue's campus uh, right after University Hall so when you're on campus University Hall is the building that looks kind of like a church uh, in the middle of campus and and this is the second building that was built on Purdue's campus. Um, so this building, which has a lot of its original uh, woodwork as well as original ceiling tiles, and another interesting original feature is the vault, which we will, there she is. So there is a vault in the first floor of this building. So this was originally an administrative building. Um, and student records as well as temporarily tuition was held in this vault. Unfortunately, I can't find the code and see if there was any left over in there, but that's okay. So within this building, part of our forestry and natural resources offices are in here, um, as well as the office of our Ag Alumni, uh, which is here. I mentioned earlier an event called the Ag Alumni Fish Fry, which is an event that we host every February in Indianapolis, um, and it's one of the largest collections of Purdue alumni um, every year that gathers. So about 2,000 of our alumni as well as students and faculty will join together for um, an afternoon just celebrating Purdue's accomplishments in agriculture for another year. Um, it is one of my favorite events ever um, and I get to, I've been fortunate enough to get to help plan it for the last four years and it is awesome but they're a great resource for you on campus. They also host a mentorship program which a lot of our students take advantage of um, in terms of working with young alumni um, or even those who are not all that young but work with alumni uh, from across the country to get to do um, different things. Um, this is here's some pictures from the Ag Alumni Fish Fry because it's just great. Um, but usually President Daniels is in attendance, um, our Dean of course, and then lots of other uh, distinguished Indiana as well as uh, U.S. agricultural figures um, 
Ted McKinney, who is the Undersecretary of Agriculture, has been there in the past, as well as um, our State Director of Agriculture, um, Bruce Kettler, many others, but it's just a great day to celebrate agriculture, um, and it's one of my favorite events that happens. Um, but anyways, the other thing that's in Findlay that a lot of our students will get to be a part of and take advantage of is the Dean's Auditorium, which is located upstairs in this building. So the Dean's Auditorium is a unique space where, where everyone is interactive with one another. So instead of a typical lecture style or meeting room style um, where only the speaker has a microphone, there each seat is actually equipped with a microphone that students can use or guests can use to uh, directly respond to the speaker. So our Purdue Student Government and Senate meet in this facility for that specific reason, as well as uh, President Mitch Daniels uses this room for um, fireside chats, other other random things but we also host a lot of distinguished alumni as well as researchers to come and give seminars in this room um, so this room is a great use of space for a lot of our clubs as well as a lot of students who just are interested in learning a little bit more about some of the things we do on campus all right would somebody like to talk about NRES and summer practicum yeah, I can take over real quick. So right now we are in between um, Finler Hall, which is the building that we were just in, and our Agriculture Administration Building, which is the building that we started in. And we're looking at our Forestry Products Building here. So this is home to our Natural Resources and Environmental Sciences Program. This is, um, I think, a really unique program that we have in that it's very interdisciplinary. Um, students can kind of um, choose their own major and form their own concentration within Natural Resources, or they can um, kind of choose a predetermined pl plan, either focusing on water quality or environmental policy or numerous other things. So it's all very tailored to a student's interest and in what they want to research. Um, I've actually, I've had an experience working um, over the summer in a conservation corps serving in California for about eight weeks. Um, so while I was in California, I worked on a trail crew building a trail on top of a mountain, as well as an ecological restoration crew doing some uh, vegetative uh, restoration. So that was um, a really cool experience that I had the help of the NRES department to help obtain. And one thing that I think that kind of really emphasizes is that your major doesn't define who you are at Purdue. So even though I'm an ag comm major, I've been able to have experiences with NRES and entomology. Um, so, you know, even if you are majoring in something but you really like this like you can do it both um, so I think the NRDS department is a really good example of that. I might have spaced out but did you talk specifically about the summer practicum program for the sophomores? Oh I have not. Um, okay. Do you want to fill on that? I actually, Nelson, do you? Sure. Yeah so as part of the, the I believe it's forestry and um, mostly the forestry program correct me if i'm wrong both, uh, both departments okay both departments forestry natural resources and environmental sciences um so this practical field experience that you'll see pulled up on the screen here this actually takes place this i think it's a five-week program during their sophomore um summer takes place up in the northern peninsula of of michigan and so they spend five weeks up there getting some hands-on experience um, in all sorts of areas, things from um, forestry and learning how to effectively scale trees. I don't know if you've ever seen like the, the steel um, timber sports competitions, probably not to that speed, but learning those types of skills, um, as well as things like relocating um, wildlife and fish um, effectively and in the correct manner, managing all sorts of different things within those areas. So. Um, some really, really cool hands-on learning opportunities that these students definitely get to have. Yeah, they've been going to the same facility for summer practicum for many years, and so professors actually have ongoing research that happens every year. Um, but specifically, our newest major in that department, in forestry and natural resources, is our aquatic science major, um, which for those of you interested in marine biology is your most landlocked version of marine biology, um, but a very heavily science-based uh, um, program, but also offers you a lot of opportunities to work with uh, aquaculture and aquatic animals. Um, so it's 
it's pretty cool. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. Um, Nelson, since we are now standing outside of your other home, uh, I'll let you talk about our agriculture economics and um, ag business programs. Awesome. Yeah, so this is, um, so like I mentioned earlier, I'm an ag business student, which is part of the agricultural economics building. This unfortunately is not our, this whole entire building is in our home. Um, the bottom four floors are home to Craner School Business of Management. Um, but the top three floors actually are home to the Agricultural Economics Department. Um, and so we'll go ahead and go upstairs. We'll get to meet some fine folks. So like Courtney mentioned with agri um, education and communication, uh, we don't maybe necessarily have as much as far as lab and physical spaces go, but being a social science and a focused on business and economics, um, it's all about the people. And so um, these are just a few examples of some of the really great people we have within the Agricultural Economics Department. Most of these are academic advisors, um, but we have some really great faculty on staff as well. Um, but they are all here um, across the college. I would say that the faculty are outstanding. They're here to make um, your experience as, as learning as possible. So like I mentioned, we're not as much of a, um, some of the concept or things that we teach are a little bit more conceptual, like this market planning model that you'll see Dr. Downey talking through. Um, so lots of different opportunities as far as um, understanding different parts of business and economics and how those things work together and, influ and are influenced. I can tell you right now, the economists are going nuts. Um, we're filming this during the, the whole COVID-19 thing, and these are going to be economic examples we're going to talk about for decades. Um, and so like, uh, like Sahini mentioned earlier, Dr. Akeen Adesina is an Ag Econ alumni. So when he won his award back in 2017, and we got to address um, the department as well as some other opportunities as well. So um, we've had some corporate sponsorship from the Bex department. So some really cool decorated floors and things like that, but lots of different areas as far as teaching goes, there's opportunities as far as, um, as far as like business management to sales and marketing to much more of the economic theory behind things as well as finance and commodity marketing and trading as far as um, the commodities on the on the exchanges and learning how to do those things effectively as well as farm management. So a lot of diversity within the department. We're, um, I believe, the second largest department um, with, uh, I think we're about 500 undergrad students. So. Um, so I think that is all we have to show you guys today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the College of Agriculture and someone is happy to um, answer those questions. We also have a phone number where you can text our team uh, and that will send a text message straight to our Ag Ambassador team and we're happy to answer that. And you can find that information on our website. Um, there are also lots of resources on the College of Ag website, including a link to our Career Finder, um, which is a great resource to help you take a short 14 question quiz to help you determine uh, kind of an area that you might be interested in studying and uh, what you need to do in high school to get to that point as well as what uh, that might look like in your studies at Purdue. Um, but we really thank you for joining us today. It's been great to get to show you our home away from home. Um, we look forward to being able to see you uh, whenever we get to see you.